Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again. We're going to go ahead and start discussing the gas laws today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by discussing just the basics. I'm not going to do a rigorous mathematical um, uh, mathematical uh, discussion at this point in time. However, I will in subsequent videos be uh, doing or be utilizing uh, these formulae mathematically and actually doing calculations because if you're looking at respiratory therapy um, even chemistry you will be doing a fair amount of, of calculating and a fair amount of problem solving using these gas laws so we will do some problems we will actually calculate these gas laws the good thing being that these are pretty much plug and chug equations plug and chug formulae there's no deriving there really is no integrating involved um, so really no, no calculus, uh, just simple um, algebra and algebraic manipulation. So not too difficult, we'll get through this. So we know what a gas is. What we're going to do is we're now going to talk about specific behaviors of gas. And really where it all starts is it all starts in this little guy here. And this is known as the ideal gas law. Ideal gas law. Now, this assumes that you have an ideal gas. And that can be a rather difficult to find in nature. An ideal gas is a gas where the, the molecules or atoms of gas um, are not interacting chemically. So I don't have uh, coulombic interaction, chemical interaction, uh, they're not necessarily attracted to each other, and they're not necessarily repelled from each other. They're just, they're just kind of floating around doing their own thing. So that's one of the first things that we need to assume about an ideal gas. Now, as we know, there are gases that are not ideal. However, this equation still works in a fairly general, fairly broad way for most of the applications that we'll run into. Okay. <clears throat> if you'd like to review... Um, what some of the specific intermolecular um, interactions are, um, I would go ahead and, and just let you or let you know that you can reference uh, the inter, uh, the von der Waals uh, forces uh, video of intermolecular uh, intermolecular interactions if you want to learn a little more about those. Okay, so let's go ahead and just break this this formula down. The ideal gas law is really kind of like the mommy of all the formulae and all the other gas laws are kind of derived from this guy. So we'll talk about this guy first. What this says is this says pressure times volume equals the number of moles times something called the gas constant times the temperature of the gas. So there's a relationship. All of these are related and it's the it's how we uh, look at these relationships between number of moles, volume, pressure, uh, temperature, and it, it's these relationships that define all of the other gas laws. So let me just quickly talk about the units that we'll be using with these formula. Pressure, pressure is always going to be measured in millimeters of mercury. We know that one atmosphere at sea level, what we what we stand and breathe in, um, ATM, at mean sea level, okay, at room temperature, is going to have a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. Sometimes you'll see 14.7 pounds per square inch. We do not use psi when we calculate these formula, however. Um, the standard unit is the millimeter of mercury. Sometimes you'll see tor, and uh, tor and millimeters of mercury can be used interchangeably. Okay, so that's pressure. Volume. Volume will always be, for these formulae, will always be expressed in liters. Or parts of a liter. Maybe it's 0 0.5 liter. Maybe it's 10 liters, 20 liters, uh, what have you. We will always express that in liter. Number of moles. What is a mole? If you remember from chemistry, a mole is just a number. And it's a big number, an incredibly big number. And it's approximately 6.02 times 10 
to the 23 atoms or molecules. And if you remember from the periodic table of elements, if I look at my weights here, my average atomic weight, um, <clears throat> excuse me, say uh, for hydrogen here, um, I look up there and it says 1.0079, um, I can roughly assume that one mole of hydrogen, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, or atoms in this case, of hydrogen, um, now if it was two hydrogens bonded together with a single covalent bond, that would be hydrogen gas, and it would be two moles of, of the uh, two atoms. So when two atoms bind to create a molecule, it would actually be a mole um, of molecules instead of atom, individual atoms. But doesn't matter. It's just 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of something, be it an atom or a molecule. But we know that if I have a mole of hydrogen, it's going to weigh approximately a gram. If I look at lithium, it's uh, 6.941. I know that about a mole of lithium will weigh um, about 7 grams. Now we know that this is changing a little bit uh, with the, the newer revisions of some of the elements coming out, but that's okay. We're not really going to get into that today, perhaps at another time. But a mole is just an incredibly large number of atoms, molecules, cars, what have you. 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that's the individual number of gas molecules is what we're talking about here. This R is something called the gas uh, constant. I believe it comes from the Boltzmann's constant. And what that constant is, is it just kind of helps uh, keep, keep the unit straight. Uh, it's something that, that um, we use in the ideal gas uh, formula. Uh, it's not going to be as important in a lot of the formulae that uh, we will be using. Um, I'll go ahead and throw that down just, just so you guys can see it. It's 0 0.082, I believe. Um, 0 0.082 is the number of the gas constant and I believe that's in um, liters of atmosphere liters ATM per mole something like that 0.0821 I believe temperature now temperature is uh, a tricky one uh, we often will see temperature in Fahrenheit or, or Celsius but for the sake of calculating these laws I need the temperature in Kelvin and if you remember, Kelvin is a scale that starts at zero, and zero is the theoretical absolute zero. And then it works its way up from there. So Celsius zero is the freezing point of water, much higher up. The quick down and dirty way to convert, if you are given a temperature, and let's say that temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, what you can do is, to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273. So 37 plus uh, 273 plus 37. 7 plus 3 is 10. 7 plus 3, 10, 11. So 310 Kelvin. So 37 degrees equals 310 Kelvin. If it was 10 Celsius, it would just be 283 Kelvin. So real easy conversion. Just make sure that you convert that temperature, if it's in Celsius, over to Kelvin. Okay, so that's the ideal gas law. Those are the units that we look at. And the laws that I'll be discussing in subsequent videos, I'll just throw them up here. Boyle's Law, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Dalton's Law, Graham's Law, and the combined gas law. 
And what I'll do is I am going to go ahead and talk about each of these laws uh, individually in separate videos. Alright guys, that's the um, introduction to gases and gas laws.